Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue flash deck in standard built around Gadwick and a Verity Circle called Gadwick's Circle. We've got the full playset of a Verity Circle, a 3 man enchantment that says whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker you get to draw a card. And then for 5 mana we can also tap target creature without flying, which of course would let us trigger the first clause to draw a card. But we're not really looking to use the 5 mana ability in this deck all that much. Instead we want to combine Verity Circle with Gadwick the Wizard, which is a 3-3 legendary human wizard that we get to play for X and triple blue. And then when Gadwick enters the battlefield we get to draw X cards. But that also means we can play Gadwick for just triple blue, X equals zero, to just put the 3-3 three, three in play and then make use of the ability that Gadwick provides, which says whenever you cast a blue spell, tap target non-land permanent an opponent controls, which may look like just flavor text, but in this deck that's kind of the key that synergizes so well with our Verity Circle, because with both Gadwick and Verity Circle in play at the same time, and especially if we can cast an instant during the opponent's turn, we get to tap down one of their creatures using Gadwick's ability, and then draw a card for free using Verity Circle, and then of course the creature won't be able to attack us, which is a nice bonus. So if we can combine both Verity Circle and Gadwick at the same time, our deck really starts going off and starts drawing a million cards, and then it's usually pretty trivial to win the game from there. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got a lot of cheap instant speed cantrips to help us tap down creatures in the opponent's turn with Gadwick and to help us find our various combo pieces. We've got a bit of interaction with our various counter spells and bounce effects and a few other payoffs for playing stuff at instant speed. So let's take a look at our entire deck. At 1 mana we've got our full playset of Spectral Sailor as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one creature with flash and flying and for 4 mana we also get to draw a card which plays nicely with counter spells. If they don't play into our counters we can simply activate the Spectral Sailor's ability. We also have the full playset of Opt to help us scry one and draw a card at instant speed. And then at 2 mana we've got our full playset of Brineborn Cutthroat as another payoff for playing all these instants as a 2 mana 2-1 creature with flash. And whenever we cast a spell during an opponent's turn we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Cutthroat. So this can also very quickly become a large threat to help us close out the game. And then we also have 4 copies of Anticipate to let us take a look at the top 3 cards of our library, put one of them into our hand and the rest on the bottom. So also helps us assemble Circle plus Gadwick. And then we've got some cheap counter spells, two copies of Quench to counter target spell unless its controller can pay two mana, and two copies of Essence Capture to counter creature spells, and also put a plus one plus one counter on our creature. Then at three mana we've got the full playset of Brazen Borrower, which we will often first play for two mana using the Penny Theft Instant Speed Adventure, returning a non-land permanent an opponent controls to his owner's hand. And then afterwards we get a three mana, three one with flash and flying, that can only block creatures with flying. It's another nice win condition. Then of course we've got our variety circles, then we've got the full playset of Sinister Sabotage to counter target spell and surveil one, and then of course our four copies of Gadwick, and between Spectral Sailor drawing cards with the ability, every now and then we could use Verity Circle, and then Gadwick, we've got a lot of great mana sinks for the late game, so we never run out of cards. And then the mana base is very simple, 20 basic islands and 4 copies of Mystic Sanctuary, which enters the battlefield tapped unless we control 3 or more other islands, Sanctuary also counting as an island. And then when the Sanctuary enters the battlefield untapped, we can put a target instant or sorcery card from our graveyard on top of our library, so it can help us recycle a key counter spell or maybe another cantrip to help us trigger Gadwick in the opponent's turn, so it gives us a bit of additional redundancy. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and what about this hand? It does need a third land pretty badly, no cantrips to help us uh, smooth out our draw. But um, we could potentially get pretty aggressive with Cutthroat and Double Sailor, so I'll try it. And then I could decide to hold the Sailor. Probably gonna run out a Sailor turn one anyway. Might get shocked, which is fine. So, there's a shock on the Sailor. A mono-red aggressive deck is going to be a pretty tough matchup, but we did assemble Circle and Gadwick, so now we just need a third land. And we're off to the races. Ooh, Chandra's Regulator, so maybe your opponent on Chandra Tribal here. Alright, and six mana Chandra's Uncounterable, so that's going to be hard to beat.
No third land, sadly. End of turn, I'm just running out these Sailors, I think. I could hold them to trigger a Gadwick to potentially draw a card, but my opponent's probably creatureless outside of maybe a Chandra's Embercat, so we're not going to get to draw much with Gadwick anyway. So, I'm assuming Cutthroat dies to a Chandra's Triumph for a Shock. Bone Crusher also works, and a second Sailor is not going to be enough. But at least we've got two power in play. And if my opponent wanted to play around two one drops, they could have just uh, stomped in my upkeep and I would have been unable to save the cutthroat anyway. All right, third land is good. So now what? I'm assuming we want to save Gadwick to maybe draw some cards, so I can either tap out for Circle or keep up Sabotage, which is probably more important. Discards Fire Artisan. But yeah, the Chandra we're most scared of is a 6 mana one that can be countered. Opponent does nothing. Alright, we'll get in for 2. At least now we picked up a nice instant speed play. That's fine. And another shock, so a lot of shocks. Alright, Sailor down. And they can activate the regulator if they want to. Discards Chandra Novice Paramancer. And they are slowly working their way up towards 6 mana, which is scary. We'll play our Borrower end of turn to apply a bit of pressure. And Chandra's Triumph, so no shortage of uh, removal. Well, opponent is down to one card in hand, so one can hope that it's not a Chandra. And then now is probably a good time to tap out for Gadwick. Sure. Discards Flame Sweep. Alright, so they are top decking here. Bone Crusher is manageable. And a Blast Zone could eventually destroy Gadwick and Circle. I could play Circle to get an attack in for 3. But then I'm Shields down on Sabotage. So I might be better off just. Uh, Waiting a turn here. And I don't really want to trade Gadwick for Bone Crusher. This card's another shock. Take four. At least there's a creature in play for the opponent that we can tap down to leverage or circle for card draw. Alright, so we're making some progress. Can hit for three. Although now the blast zone could also be a concern. Bone can put blast zone up to three. They would also lose their bone crusher giants, but we would lose a little bit more. So it's also possible I'm supposed to hold on to the circle, but then again, if they sack blast zone, they won't have six mana, and then um, they might not be able to play Chandra. So we'll try this. Put on Dust Put Blast on up to 3. Hits with the Giants before maybe blowing up the Blast Zone. And yep, there it goes. So, it's not great for us, but we do have two counter spells in hand. Probably gotta counter that one. 
and look for another Gadwick pretty much. Sanctuary can find me another Sabotage. Although that might be too slow, honestly. Would rather find a cantrip to find another Gadwick. Another circle instead. But I'm guessing most of the opponent's threats are Planeswalkers, which Assassin's Capture does not counter. And Ugin definitely counts here. Surprised they decided to run out a mountain with the regulator in play. I can use circle to tap down the 2-2 token at least. And draw a card. Alright, Brazen Borrower's not bad. Opponent hasn't activated Ugin yet, so I could decide to bounce it now. Which I don't hate. Essentially denying one activation. So for now the plan is to activate Circle and then we can flash in Borrower end of turn to try and pressure Ugin. So Circle's doing a pretty good job of drawing some additional cards here even without Gadwick. Alright, Mobilize District, another value land, and yep, there's uh, the card we did not want to see, Chandra Awakened Inferno. We mentioned it at the start of the game, and they did not fail to draw it. And with the Regulator they can kill us pretty quickly with all these uh, Chandra pings. So we're down to 8, there's Gadwick, but it might be too late. So opponents at 12. Yeah, we can draw a lot of cards, but um, probably just that to this Chandra. Anything we could draw with Gadwick that would come in handy, another Brazen Borrower. Can just force him to replay Chandra, but it's not an actual answer. Let's see, 9 mana, maybe leave ourselves with... Uh, Four mana to maybe play some instant speed creatures. So X equals two. Quench and Islands, it's not gonna do it. You have erred. And I'm pretty sure we're just dead here. They can fire up the mobilized district. We don't have any ways to tap down creatures from the opponent, sadly. And then uh, Chandra deals us another 4 damage, at least. Alright, good games. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with... I guess a reasonable hand, a couple counter spells, a Gadwick, Spectral Sailor. And I might run out Sanctuary turn 1. Or I could hold it and then use Anticipate to find third land that comes into play untapped, maybe that's okay. Because I might also want to go Sailor and then Capture, put a counter on it to get a bit of value. Opponent on blue red with a Ventress Gargoyle. Alright. Well, that could eventually become a pretty big threat. So it can block, so we'll keep the Spectral Sailor home. And then we've got a couple options here at two mana between Anticipate, Borrower, and Assassin's Capture. Alright. 
Secret Keeper themselves. Fair enough. Mills over Arclight Phoenix. So we've got an Arclight Phoenix deck on our hands. Shock Sailor. Uh, yeah, I guess it works. And opt, so that's going to bring back the Arclight Phoenix. So the Gargoyle can't attack since we have to have uh, seven cards in Graveyard. And I can use a Borrower to bounce the Arclight Phoenix back to hand. Could also just take three and then anticipate to dig for a third land. But I guess I worked out. Alright, uh, we'll just pass and then... It's gonna be a while before the Gargoyle actually starts hitting us. And in the meantime, we've got a bit of interaction. Can maybe start pressuring them with our Brazen Borrower, especially after it picks up a counter so it can attack past the Ventress Gargoyle. Opponent says go. Thrill discards Phoenix. And uh, nothing to put back with the Mystic Sanctuary, unless I want a main phase opt, which I guess is kind of reasonable. And then I don't really mind an extra land here, since we want to hit our land drops to eventually play a big Gadwick. And then I guess I don't have to play the Sanctuary this turn, in case I want to get back Sabotage if we use it. Uh, no attack yet with our Brazen Borrower. Also got to keep the Gargoyle in mind, which can mill the top card anyway, so it's not like the Sanctuary necessarily uh, gets back anything relevant. Yeah, Secret Keeper resolves. As much as I want to convert this SS Capture, we can probably get better value. And for now, just anticipate, try and find that Verity Circle. I guess I'll take another Sanctuary. And then at the very least, that delays the Gargoyle for an extra turn by putting a card back on top. And I guess Anticipate is okay here, digs a bit deeper than the Opt. But they're probably gonna mill it anyway. I could then Opt in response to draw the cards, but then I would be putting an extra card in the Graveyard. So I'll we'll probably wait until end of turn still. But Opts would be a nice way to get around the Gargoyle milling my top card, if uh, I really want to draw it. So currently 5 cards in Graveyard, Gargoyle needs 7. Pyromancer, now that is a scary card. Let's uh, SS Capture. And grow the Borrower. And now the Borrower can trade for the Gargoyle. Although at 2 Toughness it still dies to a Shock. Which uh, our opponent has showed us. Right, and there's a Shock. Yeah, I think we fight over it. Spectral Sailor, Scan Medium. Don't love putting extra cards in the graveyard, because that means the Gargoyle definitely gets to attack, but I guess we crossed that uh, line already. So I'm fine with the trade. Sanctuary back. Probably the Sabotage, and then just draw a bunch with Gadwick. But then my opponent does get to resolve whatever they want, which is kind of scary. So I guess I could wait and just keep up Opts, which can draw Sabotage. And then next turn go for Gadwick, maybe that's uh, safer. Because they might try and resolve something big now that uh, Sabotage is on top instead of in our hand. Gargoyle seems like a fine one to try and counter. And 
and then still looking for that Verity Circle. I guess Anticipate can maybe dig pretty deep to find it. Yeah, let's hope this Gadwick resolves. That's the downside of waiting. Instead of playing it while the opponent was tapped out, is if they have their own counter spells. Although they don't really strike me like a deck that uh, would play a lot of counter spells. Since those aren't the best combo with our client Phoenix. Alright, so we've got a fresh hand here, but uh, opponent still has that Phoenix in the graveyard for cards in hand, so they could do something pretty powerful here. Kicks things off with a radical idea, discarding islands. So no second Phoenix in hand yet, presumably. Lava Quill exiles Gadwick, still a profitable exchange as we got to draw a few cards off him. And then, uh, yeah, my opponent scoops it up, I guess. They felt like they were just too far behind, we had a full grip, presumably more counter spells in hand. And we could have easily won uh, the old-fashioned way without Circle and Gadwick, just uh, countering spells, drawing some cards with Spectral Sailor, and eventually uh, killing them with some of our flying creatures. So on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a pretty good-looking hand. We've got both our combo pieces, some instant speed creatures. So in this hand, I think I'm okay waiting on Sailor just so we can combine it with Circle and Gadwick in play unless the matchup requires us to trade it off early. Mono green so far. Paradise Druid's probably got a quench. And then we'll play the circle first, so we can maybe draw a card or two with Gadwick. So if it's a mono green creature deck, then... I don't hit our chances with Gadwick, as they'll be unlikely to have much removal for Gadwick. Can even trade the first Gadwick off for the troll if we really want to. We'll see. Not our circle, circle does stack, so if we have multiples we get to draw multiple cards. Nullhide Ferox. That one's a little trickier to tap down as we need to pay two mana. I guess I'll take it. Another circle. So I think the plan here is to just place circle number two. And then we can use Spectral Sailor to maybe chum block the Ferox and tap down the troll. And we just want to keep hitting our land drops, find more creatures that we can maybe throw in front of the Ferox until we have the mana to actually pay for it. Well, protection from blue shifting Ceratops is unable to be targeted by Gadwick, uh, so that's going to make it very difficult to interact with and therefore difficult to win the game. Well, I liked my chances before the Ceratops showed up, but now um, it's going to be very difficult, to say the least. We did draw all the circles somehow, so we can draw a lot of cards, but opponent can just hit us with the Ceratops four turns in a row, and there's not much we can do about it, so we have to somehow try and race with Gutthroat, but I don't really see that happening. Yeah, not sure what we were supposed to do here. Play another circle, and then play Cutthroat, draw some cards, jump Ferox, take five. Or I can jump with Gadwick. And then try and grow the Cutthroat until it's large enough to maybe present the threats. Opponent giving the troll hexproof. Yeah, I mean, we can draw all the cards in the world, but the Ceratops can be interacted with. A 
Brazen Borrower also doesn't really do much. Still pay for the ability. And tap down the 3-3 three, three troll. And that's fine. And I guess I'll opt to tap down an extra troll. And draw some more cards. So you can kind of see how this green deck would be beatable without the Ceratops. As we just get to run away with card advantage here. Hydra finishes off Gadwick, that's fine. Sabotage. So, I mean, I don't know if there's much of a point in playing this game out, given that we don't have answers for Ceratops in the deck. Just gonna die to it in two turns. So, yeah, good games. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand seems okay. We are forced to play a Sanctuary turn one here, I think, to get it out of the way, and then allow for a turn to Cutthroat. So we don't really have a ton of interaction outside of the Borrower bouncing something, but uh, we do have a lot of individually powerful cards. Opponent with a turn one Witching Well of Watergrave, so some sort of artifact-based deck. We're setting up for Cutthroat, end of turn. Burglar Rats, alright. What do we discard? Might just be Spectral Sailor. Because I definitely want to get the Cutthroat out there. And Borwer seems like a good one to keep as well. And then Opt can maybe help me find lands if needed. So no attacks for this turn. Can either opt anticipate or petty theft. Although there's nothing I really wanna bounce at the moment. Burglar rat attack is a little ambitious. Probably means they have removal in hand. But um I guess I might as well force the issue. Since I wasn't gonna petty theft anything anyway. And then I guess I'll take a sabotage, even though Lance would be good too with Gadwick. Yeah, I'll take a sabotage still. Alright, no insta speed removal, so I guess uh, Cry of the Carnarium makes sense if they really wanted to get rid of the Cutthroats, but now we can pass a turn with Sabotage and a couple other instant speed plays in hand, eventually refuel with Gadwick. Campaign, I'm okay countering. And I just want to hit my land drops, so we'll get rid of another opt. More Gadwicks. Yeah, let's just main phase opt to try and find a land. More Gadwicks. Gadwick is great, especially in these grindy matchups, but there is a limit to how many Gadwicks we want at this stage in the game. Did not find lands. I guess I'm kind of priced into opting again. But now we are shields down on the sabotage. I could Paddy Theft the Witching Well before they have the mana to sacrifice it. Don't know if that makes a ton of sense. I guess it's okay. Gets red mana. Golden Egg. 
and replace witching well. Fair enough. So now we're pretty happy passing the turn with mana up. So we can either sabotage our brazen borrower. Scrabbling claws can mess with our graveyards. That's okay. I guess we should prioritize getting rid of creatures since we can potentially get back our instants and sorceries with our additional mystic sanctuaries. So we'll pass a turn. And then um, we've got one counter spell. Would love to find a couple more. Burglar Rats is also a little annoying. But I guess I'm just discarding a Gadwick. Wish Claw Talisman. I guess I let that happen. And then just counter whatever they search up. Presumably it's not something uncounterable. Although that's definitely possible. Yeah, we'll let them have it. Start beating down with our Borrower. Cutthroat's a good draw. Scrabbling Claws gets rid of Gadwick. And our opponent is activating the Talisman. We don't know what they searched up, but uh, I guess we'll find out momentarily. So we can go Cutthroat into Sabotage. And my opponent packs it in, alright. Talisman could search up an extra counter spell, and we were definitely ahead on board now, with two sizable threats and then Gadwick to refuel eventually as well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? Yeah, I guess it's okay. Do need a third land at some point. So hopefully we can find one. But a couple early creatures, followed by a Gadwick to refuel, and one piece of interaction with the sabotage. Facing a turn on Innkeeper, that's a rough one. As that can definitely get out of hand. So Green Black Adventures, Falmar Knight draws a card and also trades off for the Cutthroat, so not the start we wanted to face. I might actually take the trade here. And I guess I'll take the trade for Sailor instead of Cutthroats. And then for now we'll send for one. Because the Cutthroat can eventually still become pretty large and maybe trade off for like a Lovestruck Beast from my opponents. So no sabotage at the ready, sadly. Regisaur, yeah, that's a big one. So I guess now we're looking for Brazen Borrower to maybe bounce it. So I guess we'll anticipate, and there it is. Verity Circle, all right, so we've assembled the combo, and if we can lock down Regisaur with uh, Gadwick and Circle, while they have to discard a card every turn, that's going to be pretty sweet. So what do we do with this turn? Something like a Questing Beast would be kind of scary. They could jam another Regisaur. But I do want to get Circle and Gadwick going. So probably still attack with our Sailor. And then maybe take the hit and bounce register end of turn if we don't need to, sabotage. And yep, there's a questing beast which I think I'm priced into countering. 
and I wouldn't mind finding more lands. I guess a borrower's not bad. So now we're just gonna bounce around this register for as long as possible. Like I could potentially trade my sailor for the Falmar Knights. Since I'm not necessarily looking to trade one for one damage, as we're eventually just gonna take over with Gadwick and Circle. Paradise Druids, that's fine. So now I will have to bounce before damage. They can replay it, but then they'll have to discard their last cards and then I can bounce it again. But uh do really need to find some lands to eventually set up Gadwick plus Circle. Which doesn't seem to be happening. So yeah, let's just... Uh, Pass a turn, I guess. Sailor can trade for Paradise Druids. Opponent discards Murderous Rider. They could have cast it if they wanted to at instant speed. But then they probably had to put a stop on their upkeep. So Registrar attacks. We'll bounce it once again. But uh, yeah, can't counter it on the way back. So it's only a temporary solution. Alright, finally hit another land drop. Is it too little too late? So I guess now we play Gadwick for one and then hope to draw a land by next turn so we can go circle plus cut through it in the same turn to manage the Regisaur. And our opponent discarding another Murder Strider, so at least uh, we're pretty lucky that they haven't figured out that interaction, otherwise we would have been dead already. So I could take 8 down to 1, um, and then what happens? I get to untap, play Verity Circle, play Cutthroat, tap down Regisaur, Cutthroat trades for Falmar Knight, I think that's the plan. And then I guess I'll keep Gadwick back as insurance in case we do need an extra blocker. And yeah, my opponent packs it in, since we had two Brazen Borrowers waiting in uh, Adventureland that we could flash in to tap down the Registrar. We would be drawing extra cards while the opponent is stuck discarding to the Rotting Registrar, and we would eventually take over. Did get lucky that our opponent didn't um, remember to play the Murder Strider before discarding to the Registrar, otherwise they could have probably won the game. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll take it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and yeah, I think we've got a keep here. Turn one Arboreal Grazer into Castle Ventress from my opponents. All right, let's uh, play Island and pass. I'm probably not gonna play out a Sailor right away since it doesn't do much in the face of Grazer, and I might wanna keep it to combine with Gadwick and Verity Circle as a one mana way to tap something down. And now Cutthroat also rewards us for holding the Spectral Sailor in hand. So our opponent appears to be on uh, a blue-green ramp deck. Finale for two, probably searching a mana creature. Not much we can do about it. So this is the elemental ramp deck. Yeah, probably gotta keep up Sabotage here to potentially counter Cavalier. 
and otherwise we get to play Spectral Sailor maybe to grow the Cutthroats so it can start attacking. And there's Cavalier. And yeah, Essence Capture seems okay. Doesn't counter Nissa, but it is another answer for more Cavaliers, Risen Reefs, you name it. And then now we can put back the Sabotage with the Sanctuary. And hit for three. And keep up Essence Capture. So Nissa would be the biggest concern here, by far. Not a Cavalier we can capture, and I think it still makes sense to put counters on Cutthroat instead of uh, Spectral Sailor, since it still doesn't get past the Grazer. And my opponent packs it in, alright. So some well-timed early counter spells, and uh, opponent knowing that we're gonna draw the Sabotage next turn to counter their next big play, with the Cutthroat pressuring them, decides to pack it in onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand seems keepable enough, even though we don't have any of our combo pieces. We've got a couple cantrips, Quench to counter an early play, Borrower for interaction and Cutthroat for pressure, so... Seems good enough for me. Probably gonna opt just to hit my third land drop, otherwise I might want to keep it until after playing the Cutthroat. But uh, it is pretty important that we at least get up to 3 mana. So it seems reasonable to spend the opt here, although... Against Mono Reds, keeping the opt to maybe grow the Cutthroat, add in some speed for 1 mana... ...to get it out of uh, shock range could also be relevant. Nah, probably still opting. So we seem to be up against the Cavalcade, red version. I'll take the land. So... Wanna quench something like an early Chandra, of course Torbran and Cavalcade are other scary cards. The um, Spitfire we can actually trade with, with our Borrower, so that's less scary than it would be in... Uh, other matchups. So yeah, we'll quench the cavalcade. So we don't have to deal with it. If they run out Chandra, I could also decide to just play a 3 mana Brazen Borrower to start attacking it. Instead of trying to play the Cutthroat first. Alright, second main Torch Courier. And a line of the stage. Fair enough, so they were just trying to bait out a counter spell with the Torch Courier maybe. And yeah, there's the scary Torbran, which we currently don't have a great answer for. So I could anticipate to go looking for an answer. Or I could just run out the Cutthroats. Of course I can bounce Torbran to delay it for a turn. I think I'm playing Cutthroat just to try and build up a bigger blocker that can block these 1-1s one -ones profitably, although it looks like they have a shock. So that didn't quite work out. Back up Cutthroat. So now we're kind of priced into bouncing Torbran. Maybe should have anticipated just to hit my land drop. Since we're pretty likely to find land. That's also the first time I'm seeing the new Torbran animation, which is pretty neat. So yeah, I think I should have just anticipated for land last turn, given that I was very likely to make this play. I right, found a land this time around. And I'm probably just making the same play. But now we can also throw a Cutthroat in the mix, which can maybe grow up to a 3-2 to actually profitably block one of their creatures. So 
So I guess this worked out. But we still need to find a counterspell here. And I'm probably blocking the Torch Courier. Although, there's also an argument for blocking the Initiate, which has first strike, which is pretty annoying, especially with Thorbrand in play. So, can anticipate and look for a Sabotage or Assets Capture. There's a Sabotage. Anticipating in my own turn has the drawback of not growing the cutthroats, but has the upside of giving me a bit more information. There's a chance I wanted to play Verity Circle that turn if I didn't find a counterspell. Don't need land 6, I don't think. Alright, another Essence Capture is pretty good in case they have more Torbrands. So we're doing a good job of out-tempoing the red deck because we kind of locked them into replaying Torbrand over and over. But they do still have a pretty full grip, which is the downside. So if they can convert all these cards in time, we could still be in trouble. And they do have another Torbrand. So now I think I like Borwer, Assets Capture putting counter on Borwer to diversify our threats a little bit, even though the Borwer would still die to a shock. And my opponent can easily chum the Cutthroat with the Initiate and the token again afterwards, whereas they can't do that with the Brazen Borrower as easily. So, take one down to 13. A little surprised they don't keep it back to chum block. But uh, yeah, let's play Verity Circle and uh, Attack. I guess we should have attacked first to give them a bit less information. Put on takes 10. That's very surprising. Because now they're dead to either one of our Brazen Borrowers hitting them. And Torbrand still doesn't kill me here, unless... I guess they could have a shock or another creature that's still not lethal. We'll be taking 12 here. So it was a lot closer than it appeared, we ended up at one life, but uh, we were able to take advantage of the fact that my opponent was trying to force a 4-mana card in play, which uh, doesn't quite line up very well against 2-mana bounce spells and cheap counter spells, whereas if they had a much lower curve draw with a lot more 1-drops early, we could have been in a lot more trouble. Yeah, this mono blue Gadwick deck, sometimes you never draw the Gadwick plus Verity Circle, which definitely stings if you draw the Verity Circle half, which is a lot less exciting than the Gatwick half. So overall, the deck is definitely more on the janky end of the spectrum, but if you do get to assemble it, it can be very powerful and win you some games that a normal Flash deck would not be able to win, but you do pay the price in those games where you just draw some of your combo pieces without the other half and uh, your cards are a lot weaker than they would be otherwise. But it is an interesting twist on the typical Flash archetypes and gives us a lot of interesting lines of play when uh, Gadwick and Verity Circle are involved. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.